Well, good afternoon, Discovery, and uh, happy Wednesday. Welcome to week two. Um, it's been a little while since I've last talked to you, and that was actually kind of a mistake. I was hoping to have a video for Tuesday of this week, but um, having some tef technical difficulties and things that I wasn't really planning on, and um, I hope you uh, aren't having any of those issues, but uh, thanks for doing that buzz math for me yesterday and getting some of those practice problems in on Monday. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the questions on buzz math that I saw, and really the big thing for this week that we're going to um, see a lot as the week ends up here on Thursday and Friday, and that is uh, how do you find the area of a compound shape? So if you look back on your buzz math from yesterday, one of the questions had a shape that uh, wasn't kind of a, just a normal triangle or square, but it is what we call a compound shape, and it looks like that. It looks like a house. And you're going to see a lot of compound shapes uh, today and tomorrow and Friday and in the weeks ahead. And basically what it means is we've got two shapes, a square and a triangle, but we're combining them into just one big shape. Um, and so we're not going to draw it as a square and a triangle. We're going to draw it like just a normal house. And so we could do this with a lot of different shapes. You're going to see um, several different examples today. And we're going to ask you to find the area of shapes like this that aren't really squares or triangles, um, but they're called compound shapes. And so uh, you're going to find, I think, this is pretty simple because all we need to do is take those compound shapes and cut them into pieces, cut them into smaller chunks that you do know how to find the area for. So I'm going to have several examples uh, today for you to practice, and then we're going to see some more of this uh, later this week. But all we would need to do is look at these shapes and say, okay, if I can take this shape and turn it into a simpler shape that I can find the area of, then I can just find, kind of like puzzle pieces, I can break it apart into smaller chunks. So let's look at this one right here. Uh, <clears throat> I've got obviously a weird looking shape. There's no formula for the area of that. And we're not going to have any formula that would work for that because it's unique. It's a compound shape. But I could just really easily cut this into a triangle on top and then a rectangle on the bottom. And so now all I need to do is find the area of the rectangle and then add that to the area of the triangle. And I'm just making this up as I go here. But if we find the pieces here, we can just take the pieces and say, okay, hold on. 10 times 5 we know is 50, so there's our rectangle. 5 times 2 is 10 divided by 2 is 5, so there's our triangle. So we have the two pieces, just like a puzzle. Let's add those together, 5 plus 50 is going to get our total area of 55 and then our units squared. So when we look at these compound shapes, you're really doing the exact same thing. You just first need to take it and break it into a puzzle. And that's why on Monday where I had you do the worksheet, I had you draw out the picture. That's going to really kind of help you uh, as we look at these compound shapes today, find these and, and turn them into smaller pieces. And then when you're finished, just add them all together. So that's the big idea with uh, this week. That's why we've been calling all of our lessons compound shapes this week. Hopefully that's uh, making sense. Um, I wanted to talk real quick about how everything's going with our assignments and everything that's being given to you each day. Um, I've been telling you that I'm trying to make it easy and kind of really simple and we're going to keep doing that. Uh, I don't want to give us too much and I want to keep us going um, and just give you about maybe 20-30 minutes each day of math to keep you on top of things give you just the bare, um, the bare minimum that you need to, to get by in advanced math. And uh, if we can stay on top of those things, I think you're going to be just good whenever we do get back to school, um, which hopefully is, is soon. But, of course, we'll see. We're not, not sure yet. Um, a lot of you have been asking me about grades, and at the, at the moment we, we just don't know what those grades are going to look like. We're going to have to wait and see if we, if we get back um, to school in May. But at the moment, if you can just keep up with the 20 to 30 minutes each day, if you keep sending me those emails, I am keeping track of those. I've put a couple of them in PowerSchool already. Um, I just don't want you to fall behind. So let's do those 20 to 30 minutes each day. Keep those emails coming, and, and uh, we're going to do just fine. If you've got any questions about these compound shapes, uh, remember, send me some emails. Uh, the best times to reach me are 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon. But I check my email pretty often, so uh, I'll probably get back to you. Um, as soon as I can. And, but 10 and 2 is when I'm kind of sitting at my table really checking them often. So let me know how you're doing. Let me know how these compound shapes are doing. Um, let's stick, stick with it. Let's keep going. And I think, uh, I think we'll, we'll find this pretty easy as we move into next week. So have a great one, and we'll see you next time.